if you do the things that prepare you for the examination that you're about to be confronted with, say the SAT. You study more, you practice more, you're in an environment that contains, for example, video games where you're solving more of a kind of logical puzzles that would almost never arise as, say, a rural shepherd until recently, you're going to do better. And to the extent that, to the extent that the amount of time members of different groups devote to these training behaviors differs. That's an obvious predictor IV that's going to influence the scores of members of those different groups differently and produce a gap between them. So I think there's some question as to to what extent, if any, baseline genetic differences between groups also influence score gaps. But I, I think this point is simply an obvious one. It can't really be denied. The debate, as I understand it, uh, at least among, I think, 79% of scientists, if I recall the data, is whether to, is essentially, is 50% of the gap between groups as it currently stands culturally caused, or would that figure be closer to 100%? I don't think that anyone argues that this gap is entirely genetic. Um, and as I recall, more than 50% of the scholars surveyed in the most recent poll think that it's less than 50% genetic. And I, I tend to, to hold to that view. I'm closer to the 100% cultural end. But I mean, just like looking at, and I'll just like break the fourth wall and put a piece of paper up here. I mean, there are quite a number of data points that support this point of view. So, I mean, in addition to the overall Flint effect, we've seen a number of nationally specific rises. I mean, I went to the, uh, the site BrainStats uh, earlier this week, which is kind of a, a storehouse for recent national IQ data. And the site notes that according to Lynn and Van Hannen's well-known, uh, now somewhat classic study, the tested mean IQ for the nation of Nigeria in West Africa was 69. Now, according to the most recent national data that they have up there, and again, I mean, you can, you can check and see how well conducted these, these studies were and so forth, or, you know, who was, was subjected to the test, but that's currently 84. Uh, Chanda Chasala has pointed out that the scores of West African immigrants, such as Nigerian Igbos, this is Chasala 2015, um, in the United States and the United Kingdom right now are a bit over 100. So... Again, I think that the the 69 to 84 jump certainly can in no way be attributed to genetics. You could argue that there's some selection effect when you look at the difference between 84 and, say, 101. But, I mean, I would say that, I mean, the UK has a policy of entry for all previous uh, Commonwealth residents, as I understand. I don't, I don't think that's a very significant factor. And there, I mean, there are quite a few of these. Tom Soul in, uh, no, but I mean, I suppose like Soul in one of his books, um, Conquest and Cultures, I believe, actually tracks the intra-U.S. IQ scores for members of different white immigrant groups. And again, you see, you see this change. Ashkenazi Jews on a number of the Army Alpha Basic, et cetera, boards scored so poorly initially in their early years that people said that, for example, the argument that there was an unusually high level of Hebrew intelligence, I believe was the term, had been debunked in full. And those scores obviously increased. I believe the baseline soul list was a 91. Again, I'm sure viewers will critique some of this point, might be off by a point or two. But the baseline was a 91, uh, and that gradually increased over time without adjusting for the flood effect, by the way, to the current 114. And the same thing was done for Italians. The same thing was done for Poles. And in each case, you see an increase of at least nine to 10 points. The reason I'm kind of droning on about this is the current black-white IQ gap um, per Murray, once again, although I mean people from audacious Epigon on the very far right to Dickens on the left have come up with similar figures, is 91 to 102 or 103. So I mean, say that's a gap of 12 points increases in tested IQ on very solid, full-scale, large-in examinations in many, many places over time, over a span of almost a century, have been bigger than that. So that would be the culturalist case. There's something causing the 69 to the 84, the 91 to the 114. 
And I, I've given some examples about what I think that might be study time, training, family stability, enriched environment. I actually don't think nutrition, that sort of thing, played that big of a role if we're talking about Jews from you know 1920 to 2015. But those variables that caused those increases exist in this world and have to also impact, say, the black-white case, but also certainly the, the gap between whites and Caucasian Hispanics, who I believe are scoring at 95. That's probably a linguistic barrier. So I, I really do encourage the classic old scholars line, but further research, go out and look at how much we can quantify this stuff and bring back that, that entire research paradigm. The, the 50 to 100% question is interesting, but to me, the surges themselves are at least, at least as interesting. 